Well, good afternoon all and welcome back to the Off-Grid Homestead where we're going to continue having a look at the DC Ripple issue. I suppose our video series on the DC Ripple and what I have done and where we're at at this stage. So it looks like we've got that Ripple sorted out. So I'm going to go through uh, some of the things that I've done. And this is important, this little bit. Please watch this video all the way through. Don't skip through it. If you're going to skip through it, you'll miss some of the key points. Watch the video all the way through so then you can then make a decision on whether I've done the right thing or whether we need to do something different. So first up, what I did is, in fact, first up, before we even start, we're going to have a look at when this problem started because this system here that I'm running here with this inverter here has been running for five years. Now, three and a half of those years have been with the lithium batteries. The DC high ripple alarm only came in six months ago. So we'll have a quick look at that, and then we're going to have a look at what I've done to try and combat it. So I'll quickly step you through this little bit. I'll promise I'll go as quick as I can so I don't bore you. So when you log into the portal, you're going to get to this stage. So I'm going to come over to our advanced setting, because someone asked me how I was getting all this information of the ripple. And then in the advanced section, you're going to see this uh, whole heap of different screens. And what we're doing is we're going to come down to see if I can find it. This one here where it says, I'm going to let the focus in, V bus warning. Come on, phone. There we go. V bus warning alarms. Now, I'm going to click on that up there, which is going to uh, bring up a wider screen of that. So... Today I've had absolutely no warning alarms at all. So I'm going to come up here and we're going to go back to uh, yesterday. And you can see yesterday I've had no warning alarms. So then I'll go back to uh, seven days ago. So if we go back seven days ago, when I get it to load, we'll see that well, we've had warning alarms. So we'll, I'm, I'm not going to worry about what days they are because it's take too long. These two days here, we've had nothing. So we've had warning alarms each day. Now, if I go back, and this is the important bit, if I go back to the entire 12 months, and we'll get that to load, we'll have a look to see when this started. So we can see the entire year here, starting from January, coming right up into December. So we started to have this, this problem around July so that is when the problem started so prior to that we weren't having a problem now the charge voltage or the bulk absorption voltage that I've been running into these batteries has been 57.6 volts from the day I put these lithium batteries in which were three and a half years ago so we haven't really had any issues with that voltage up until about six months ago so I'm, I'm not sure whether it was a voltage thing, but there could be a little bit of a clue with that one, which a subscriber mentioned, and we'll get that one in a second. So what I did is I took out that second controller, so we're running everything on this first controller, and that kept keeping the voltage the same. That actually took a lot of that ripple away, but we still logged one of the ripples, and it was happening when we were sitting at 100%. So it's not happening under load. So when the inverter's running... Pulling load, that's not when we're getting our ripple. The, uh, the ripple is happening when our batteries are sitting at, at 100%, so they're really not doing much. So uh, some people were suggesting it was the BMS shutting down and coming back on again. Now, the BMS shuts down at 60 volts. We're not going that high. But then another, another subscriber suggested that one of the cells in the battery can trigger the BMS, which is potentially uh, a good valid point. Now, there's three batteries down here, so... It would have to trigger all three BMSs, so I'm not sure how that would work there. So I'm not going to comment either way because I really don't know. So I'll, I'll leave that up for you to give me some suggestions on that. So what I've done is once I removed this second controller, we, we did get one log. So then I dropped the voltage down to 55 volt on a bulk absorption. And when I did that, we had no logs. Then I've increased that voltage back to 56.8 volts. Today, we've had no logs at all. And 56.8 volts seems to be like the sweet number and voltage that most people are recommending out there. So I'm going to keep your recommendations and I'm going to keep this at 
6.8 volts and keep that voltage a little bit lower. Now the battery manufacturer recommends the charge bulk absorption charge voltage to be, just look at my notes here, at 58.4. So that's what it recommends that we should be charging at, which is well above than what I was doing and definitely above what you're suggesting I should be doing. So I don't want to go too low because I want to make sure I've got cell balancing. Dropping that voltage and taking that center control, that second controller out has actually sorted the problem. So there's one thing that could be an issue that someone suggested, and that's regarding there could be an issue with the cell in the battery, which is starting to throw some DMSs out. So let's have a look at these batteries. So the three batteries are down here, are a 48 volt, 100 amp hour batteries each, wired up in parallel. So we're getting our 300 amp hour at 48 volts. Now I have gone over all the connections, so all our connections are definitely fine. This wiring configuration has been in here, well, ever since I put that first battery in, and there's the date there, and then the other two batteries came a month later. So these have been in since the middle of 2022 for the lithiums, and prior to that I was running lead acid, but that's completely different um, technology and different different battery chemistry so we don't need to worry about that so the connections are fine i have checked the current flow between each connection and we are getting equal current flow between them so none of the batteries have failed so we're all operating so my question is if if one of the bms's on the, one of these let's say this battery for argument's sake has a bit of an issue with a cell and then wants to drop the bms out I would have thought the other two batteries would continue running the power and I wouldn't have thought they would cause an issue. But then again, it might cause the issue, I don't know, and this is where I fall back on some of you out there that subscribe to my channel because you're very, very clear in and understand these systems, these systems and batteries and technology way better than me. So if I had one BMS tripping in and out because of a faulty cell in one battery, could that potentially cause that ripple now we have dropped our voltages so whether that is cancelling out that I, I don't know so um, that is something we might look into but at this stage by dropping voltage we have sorted that out for now so there's one thing i could do though to these batteries i could actually cut the top open on one of those batteries and do individual cell voltage tests and see how the cells are going. The drawback with that is these are super, super expensive batteries. They cost me just on $3,200 each. So there's just shy of $10,000 worth of batteries sitting here, and they have a four-year warranty on them, so they're still under the warranty period, so I don't really want to go chopping anything open yet until the end of the warranty period, which is up in about six months' time. So potentially we might be able to do some tests on each individual battery discharge test and if there's one that is looking a bit funny we might cut that one open and do individual cell voltage tests so that is one thing we could do just to check those cell voltages because the it's old school bms's on those they don't have uh, bluetooth and be able to check each individual cell uh, voltages through the bluetooth that's where we're at at this stage and we've so far for day two eliminated those ripples so i personally and i can be wrong here so don't not suggesting that i'm right in in this video because, because i'm only guessing but i don't feel it's an inverter issue the cables on the inverter are very thick the inverter does not do very much work the only time this does a lot of work is when the hot water service kicks on which is at midday and that runs for about three quarters of an hour, so two two point four kilowatt element in that little eighty liter hot uh, sorry a fifty liter hot water service for the bathroom. Other than that, it's just running the power in the cabin, and it's only really pulling about four hundred watts. So the the current draw on this inverter is very very minimal, and I don't think it's uh, an issue with the inverter. But I I can't guarantee that because I don't know. Right, I'm rabbiting on. There's not much more I need to say on this. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. For the people that give me a thumbs down, well, you, you can go watch someone else's channel. I'll put time and effort into this. These videos aren't for you. If you don't like them, piss off somewhere else. Right, I'm going to go in, grab myself a cup of Joe, grab a bit of ham off that lovely Chrissy ham I've got in, give a little bit for the puppy, and we'll see you in the next video.